Patrick Muyaya, thank you so much for joining me on Upfront. Thank you. Uh, tensions are flaring between the DRC and Rwanda, which your government has accused of backing the armed group M23. Uh, it, that's, that's an accusation that Rwanda has repeatedly denied, of course, despite evidence documented by the United Nations and Human Rights Watch. Uh, there's also been a war of words with Kigali as violence proliferates, sparking fears of further escalation. Rwanda has said that your government is, quote, preparing for war. Is war with Rwanda imminent? Uh, thank you for your question. And I think what we are living today, it's not like for the first time we are having this kind of situation with Rwanda. In the past years, they've been fighting almost five times uh, the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo. You can remember in 1996 with FDL, FDL. you can remember FCDC and the PM23. They've been doing it for years, and they always keep the same speech of denying the fact of what is what they've been doing in the eastern part of ERC. Today, we don't even uh, want to go on detail of that because there is a documented report from United Nations experts. There is a white paper we publish here in Kinshasa. There is those lot of uh, condemnation from all Western countries, starting by United States, asking Rwanda to stop clearly to support M23. Democratic Republic of Congo, with the President Tshisekedi, we are busy because we have a, some tough challenge we need to face. In, in that condition, we don't need any war with anyone. We need to fix our own problem to work, uh, to deal with all those armed groups we've been uh, uh, killing people for the past years in the eastern part of the country. That's our priority. But it's clear here that uh, President Kagame, because we don't think that one of these people are a, with him on that war, or that useless war, He's doing that because he has other interests, such like continue looting uh, in Eastern DRC, uh, stealing minerals, etc. There is clearly some economical reason uh, who can justify what the President Kagame is doing today in the Eastern part of DRC. Oh, one of the challenges here, of course, is what's happening with M23. There are the military challenges. There are the legitimate threats that you've raised. Uh, another piece of this, though, is the actual war of words that has been escalating. Uh, President Chisekedi called Rwandan President uh, Paul Kagame a warmonger. He also referred to his uh, actions as diabolical. Uh, that kind of language, that type of rhetoric, certainly doesn't de-escalate the tension. Uh, is it adding fuel to the fire? No, we don't think. You know, here, since the beginning of this war, we've been talking with Rwandis from the past July. First, it was in Rwanda, and then we went to Nairobi two or three times. We went to New York with the President Macron. We went everywhere. And here, the President Tshisekedi as a past is known but by being a Democrat, someone who's been fighting to get in power democratically. President Kagame, you can just look back on his background and then you can have an idea of what kind of leader he is. So the President Kagame... But, but, but the question... The guy I'm, 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 I'm less asking about the type of leader he is and more about if the language that's being used uh, is making matters worse, if the goal is peace. Well, the, the language we've been using doesn't, like, doesn't mean anything if you have to compare of what President Kagame and his troops are doing in the eastern part of the DRC, especially. Let me give you an example. In last November, in Kishishe, where they killed almost uh, 200, 200 people, uh, men, women, lady, in a cruel condition. It's not here about words. It's about those acts of violence they've been doing. And all the international community condemn what's happened in Kishishe. So there is certainly ample documentation of uh, M23 committing human rights violations, summary executions, rape, uh, forced recruitment of people into the ranks. You've referenced some of this stuff yourself today. Uh, however, your government has also been accused of backing militias with similarly poor human rights records. I'm talking about groups like the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, the FDLR. Uh, they've been accused of killing hundreds of civilians. Uh, they've been uh, accused of widespread sexual violence. Uh, President Chisekedi has said that he opposed any alliance between the Congolese army and militias, 
But there are reports, credible reports, that document the supply of arms, the supply of ammunition, uh, food, uh, all to these groups. You know, why is your government backing these militias? I think here we must make things clear because there is a lot of manipulation and bad news, especially it's one of the specialities of speciality of Rwanda government, spreading bad news and fake news. What must be clear here that FDLA you are speaking about killed first Congolese. Those people of FDLA, we've been fighting them since 1996. Till today, we continue to fight them because they pose there are a security problem for Congolese people first. In the past years, unfortunately, they are among of those people who killed the Italian ambassador in the region. So we cannot work with those people uh, called FDLR because you're saying, you're saying you cannot work with F, you're saying you cannot work with FDLR, but there is credible evidence. When I look at reports from Human Rights Watch, just as one example, uh, there are credible reports of people who say that the Congolese army has supplied armed groups with aid and weapons. Uh, one FDLR fighter, uh, for example, told Human Rights Watch in October of 2022 that he himself witnessed four transfers of ammunition. And he says that it's the government, quote, uh, that would always provide us with ammunition. He was specifically referring to the troops. He said they also gave us no, uniforms and I, boots. I, I don't think when when we have these me. level of reports of armed groups uh, getting support from the Congolese army, how do you respond to that? No, no, I don't think... Um, let, let, let's be clear on that question. There is no collaboration between our army and any militia. So don't take for granted, like, don't give credit to all those people, or oh, some of them can be used by the Rwanda strategy to make sure they are, like, uh, complicated the situation. Because but this is Human Rights Watch. Do you, do you dispute? Are you, are you disputing? Are you, are you disputing Human Rights Watch? You have often criticized the Rwandan government, as have other people in your government. One of the places that they have looked to, to to verify their claims of the violence and atrocity committed by the Rwandan government and groups like M23 has been Human Rights Watch. Now, the same organization which people have trusted, Human Rights Watch, is saying that your government has done the very same thing or, or very similar things. Examples of the Congolese army supplying armed groups with, with arms and aids, ammunition, uniform, boots. This has come on multiple occasions from multiple people, people from FDLR, fighters from the Mai Mai uh, Kabidon militia have also uh, made claims that Congolese army supplied them with, with, uh, with ammunition. Across the board, we're hearing these claims. Are you disputing Human Rights Watch account? And if so, why? No, we must be clear. First, you cannot make any comparison between M23 which is like uh, a proxy of Rwandan different forces and a movement like FDLR. M23 is doing occupation by doing massacre on people. That's the first point, it must be clear. You cannot make any comparison between them. There is no collaboration between our army and militia. But they made some report about some situation here, you must just avoid to make a generalization. There is no, uh, like, a, a common plan between our army and militia about attacking or doing things against Rwanda or M23 inside DRC, which is very different with M23 fighting with the Rwandan different forces, killing people, doing massacre. Uh, there have been a number of talks and initiatives aimed at brokering an end to the fighting. Uh, most recently at the East Africa Community Summit in Burundi uh, earlier this month. Uh, these initiatives have largely failed to yield any real results, and, of course, the violence has continued. Uh, M23 is asking for direct negotiations with your government. Uh, is your government willing to talk to them? No, we don't. Uh, we cannot negotiate with a terrorist group. But we agree that we can talk with them, but there is the condition it was made by head of state. Uh, just look back at what happened in Luanda in uh, November 23. In November 23, there was a meeting between head of state of the Eastern African community. They all agree on what we call in French, the auto roadmap in English. In this roadmap, the first condition was ceasefire. Ceasefire, uh, uh, 
uh, evacuating like localities and then disarmament. And then after the, this whole process, we can see the way we can talk with those M23 guys and the way we can deal with the Rwandan government because we won't stay in the state of war for the rest of our life. So we can, we as government, we are able to talk with Rwanda or to talk with uh, M23 after they will respect what the roadmap of Luanda recommend. Ceasefire, retreat from the uh, occupied territories, disarmament, and then we can see the way we can talk. It will be done just if they can respect what the head of state recommended after the meeting in Rwanda. And it was backed by United States, United Nations, and European Union. Patrick Muyaya, thank you so much for joining us on Upfront. Thank you, sir. Thank you.